dark side of the force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Sith Talk. Today we have on the show Jacob from the Tales from Tashi Station YouTube channel. How you doing, Jacob? I'm doing all right, buddy. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. It was pretty uh, pretty spur of the moment, but I'll uh, thanks for having me, man. I've uh, I've always enjoyed talking to you, so thanks for yes. uh, th thanks for having me on. Of course. So tell us a little bit about your channel and where we can find you at. All right. So my so a little bit about my channel. Uh, so my first. Thing, what I did was a was a uh, what if of if Obi Wan took Anakin to to Uta Palace. My that's that that's my baby. That's the first thing I mm. I came I came out with. It's on my Spotify channel. Uh, definitely go check it out. I think it's good. I might be a little bit of I might be a little biased, but I think it's pretty <laughs> good. Um, I've got a lot of uh, I have got a character breakdown of of Kyle Katarn. I've got an origins episode of like how. I became a Star Wars fan, and just how, what did what cer certain Star Wars media influenced me to the fan I am today. And mm -hmm. um, right now, of course, it's just a lot of Bad Batch stuff. So yeah, I mean we're hot. I mean we're hot and heavy in the middle of it, and we got something else that dropped today. So that's coming down the pipe. And um, yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of just what my channel is in a nutshell. I'm still very early on. I'm still finding my feet uh i am very fortunate however that i did bump into you guys uh bump into uh you uh uh mortis fm yeah uh, be on the dune see all those guys when i did um because i think it makes it it makes it makes it easier to just essentially be friends with a bunch of chill star star wars fans that just yeah know their stuff but i'm ranting a little bit uh to where to find my channel uh is um on youtube instagram and spotify all same name tales from tashi station and um to clarify if you guys do not know what tashi station is it's the uh it's where luke was going to go to pick up power converters uh when owen Told him, "Hey, clean these droids and get and get them ready by <laughs> by supper time." Yeah, um, I was. Um, I realized not a lot of people, not a lot of people probably probably know that because I mean it's just a quick one liner from whiny Luke in the first twenty minutes of Star of yep. of, of, of the first Star Wars movie. So I just I picked that name because I thought it would be a little unique and yeah. not not what not something a lot of people would think of, but yeah. I mean, I've no. I mean, Star Wars is literally in my blood, so it's. It was just. I just. I just thought it would make a lot of sense, and here we are. So. No, I freaking love it, and I love the name right away. And I was gonna ask you how you got it, but you answered that question. So for you guys yeah. watching, go subscribe. I'm gonna put the link down in the description. You're gonna be seeing a lot of this guy on YouTube for sure. <laughs> now, Thanks, every, yeah, of course. So everyone that comes on, we start off with three Star Wars questions. You ready? All right. Hit so me. the first one is what is your favorite Star Wars movie? Favorite Star Wars movie is Empire. Ooh, why Empire? It's just I mean, it's just the it's just the best one. In 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 my since I've gotten older, it's become my it, it I mean it was my favorite one when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the uh to the VHS uh box yes you see right there that's yep. the uh that's the original 96 uh re-releases that i watched as a kid and like i told you on my show uh i just got those from my dad and said hey i'm i i want these because they're sentimental give them to me yeah so uh but yeah it was uh it's i've understood that movie a lot more as i've gotten older it takes what we know from the first film and flips it on its head Yep. uses all of the characters um strengths in the first films as their weaknesses in the second film um and just the i mean it's got the biggest plot twist in all in all of film history i mean yeah it, it, i mean walk up walk up to anybody on the street anybody and they will and you say that quote to them they will know star wars yeah because that's just 
that is a Star Wars quote, and um, it's one of the only saber fights in in my opinion that feels like there's like it's a like it's a big like pay per view fight like yeah, a, yeah. like a boxing match or like a or like a or like a UFC fight or something like that high stakes and like, yeah like you could feel the stakes in the room when him when Luke and Vader face off for the first time so yeah that's uh empires my uh definitely 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 my favorite uh my favorite movie nice nice no good choice you can never go wrong with empire man so the next question is what's your favorite star wars show i'm gonna say clone wars i'm nice. gonna say clone wars but but bad batch is slowly and it depends on what how these last four episodes go yeah bad batch is slowly becoming my number one because it's just the it's just this season in particular has just been quality the yep. whole time and i mean i say it on every single one of my breakdowns if you guys haven't watched my breakdowns go watch them i say this in every single episode they haven't missed even on, even i mean last night was oh. i'm still not, i'm still not emotionally okay over yeah. what hap- what happened um that's probably one of the only times that i'll that that i can remember that even in the even in the original trilogies the empire looked beatable yeah in those two episodes that we saw last night when they are uh when they're taking over Pabo, yeah they don't look beatable they look like they look like a force like yeah yep i mean like it was scary to see what they were doing and that's the thing that got me it just it seemed bleak i mean even like even when crosshair was fighting off those troopers trying to get the trying try, trying to get the tracker off yeah i knew that he like i was thinking he's gonna miss this by i, I was thinking he was gonna he was gonna get a clean shot off like i thought yeah. it was gonna that i was gonna be like them them playing on the trimmer thing where he gets a clean shot off but it goes just left yeah but no, he's getting attacked by like seven people. Yeah, and at the very last second, he just kind of no scopes this thing and and just and just and just misses it. So, yeah. Um, to but to answer your question, Clone Wars is my favorite with Bad Batch coming in very close, and and it's just because of the the lore that um Clone Wars puts in with the with from the um. From the Mortis God's Ark, yeah, to, to one of my one of my favorite arcs, probably my second favorite arc in the in the show, is the Five's uh, conspiracy arc. Oh, is, so um, good! I mean, they're literally dancing like the thing that I remember when I first watched that. I'm thinking they've got this thing solved. Yeah, like like they like they have it solved. It's close, but. Yeah. Palpatine is just pulling the strings ever so ever so slightly to where he's like, oh, it's a it's it's this, it's that. It's not it's not actually what this is. So it's yeah. It that 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 one frustrated me because I'm just like, you guys, you guys have you have it. He's you've got him caught, and then just poof, nothing. Yeah. So, but I I just love Clone Wars because it builds on it makes Revenge of the Sith make sense. Like Anakin's downfall makes sense. And they also yep. explain it in the, in the later seasons where Ahsoka was because everyone, because everyone for years was, where's Ahsoka at? Da, 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 da. Like on every forum you can think of, they're just yeah. mashing their keyboards. So I really like the uh, Siege of Mandalore. That's, I mean, I've, Amazing. I can go back. I can go back and watch that the duel between Ahsoka and and Maul anytime. So uh, yeah, Cl- uh, Clone Wars is my uh, is my favorite show, followed very closely by Bad Batch. We'll see how these last four episodes end up. Nice, nice, good choice, good choice. So the last question is: Who is your favorite Star Wars character? 
Well, in this one, it's going to be characters because this character <laughs> I I view as I view as one of the same. Anakin and Vader. Nice. I I, I view Anakin and Vader as two sides of the same coin. They're mm-hmm. literally the light and the dark side of 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 Anakin Skywalker and. The th- and I'm going to go back to my Clone Wars comment. Mm-hmm. Seeing how someone so kind-hearted, so good in Anakin Skywalker, how he can go from someone who would do anything for his friends and just would literally die for his friends to just a tortured soul who threw that through um just a primal paternal instinct of love for his son turns mm-hmm. back to the light and um just the story of Anakin Skywalker is yes you might have you might have done terrible things you might have done just inhumane things <laughs> but younglings you can, well that and just like and just terrorizing the entire galaxy for yeah. I mean, being being the emperor's like Baba Yaga, being his boogeyman for the for the better part of by the end of Return, what twenty five years? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. So going, but going from someone who was so kind hearted to a tortured soul invader, I just I, I I love that story, and I love and I. I've said this before. I love Anakin. I love seeing Anakin's fall in, Re- yeah. in Revenge of the Sith because there's one moment that I'm all that I'm always screaming at the TV every time I watch it. Every single time I'm watching it uh-huh. is when Anakin is is in Palpatine's office and, and Palpatine comes out to him and says, "I'm I'm the Sith Lord," and the whole time I'm I'm screaming screaming at my TV. Anakin, just kill him and just deal with the consequences later. Yeah, but because I mean he's got him right there, and I just love that we get that we got to see Anakin at his fullest potential in that Ahsoka episode. I mean, seeing him flip from light and dark like he's oh. flipping a like he's flipping a light switch, it's just it was beautiful. And um, to tease what I'm going to talk about later. That's uh, I'm I'm you know what. I'll just uh, I'll t- I'll tell you more about that later. Nice. So Anakin's story, I I just love how to this day it started in seventy seven. It's twenty twenty four, and it's not done because he was in Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. We're getting him in season two. So I just love how his story is just continuing. It's 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 insane. It's amazing. I freaking love Hayden, man. Ah, oh, so good, so good. Now the next thing I wanted to get into. <laughs> So I know you said you originally started on Spotify. What made you go to YouTube and start your YouTube channel? Um, I just wanted, I just felt like I wasn't getting enough traffic to YouTube. That ma- I mean, traffic to Spotify, Okay, if that makes sense. And uh, I've just, I mean, I've, um, I just wanted to start doing YouTube content. Yeah. And uh i just got i mean i've got a i mean i'm working on a logitech webcam and a and a and a ring light i mean it's nothing that's all you that's all you need bro that's all you need it's 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 nothing fancy so i mean it's it's a simple setup and it works for me and i just i feel like i felt like i most creators that i followed at the time which were it started with just theory and Mm -hmm. then i found you then i found diamond figs then i found um beyond the dune sea then i found then i found mortis fm yeah and i just started following all you guys and and i followed you i followed you guys on apple podcast like on like whatever platforms you guys were on yeah 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 so and so i just kind of i followed that template of put it like put your stuff out in audio format and video format so everywhere you can get it to you can get it to a wider audience you can yeah. you, you can you can you can catch more fish essentially so yeah. 
Um, and plus, I just, I mean, I just like making videos. I went to, yeah. I went, I went to, I went to college. I went to school um, for uh, media productions, and doing this, doing this as a as a quote unquote hobby is letting me flex muscles that I haven't used since yeah. I was in college. And something that I genuinely love doing is m- making videos and theory crafting for Star Wars. So I just decided let's let's get on youtube let's see let's see let's let's see what happens so and so far awesome yeah and so far i'm uh i'm pretty i'm pretty satisfied with the uh results i said i can say i've made a couple of good friends in the last in in the last three months so nice no that's awesome and like that's glad you're doing it because you're passionate about star wars you're having fun and like bro like you just said all you need is what you have when i first started all I had was my iPhone 13. I edited everything on iMovie and I was having a blast because like this was stuff that I did anyway. Like I genuinely did it. And then, you know, eventually over time, like down the road, you get monetized and you start getting a little bit extra. Then I slowly like upgraded. But literally, I, I tell people all the time when you first start, use whatever you have. And it's just the the content that matters, not necessarily how crispy your camera is or your lights or the audio like it's it's the content man yeah so well, those things those things do help like if you like that i mean that's why like in some of my earlier videos like you can you can tell the the light the lighting in this room isn't very good because i don't have this i don't have this light right here yeah. be, beaming at me so um and i was actually going to start shooting on my on my laptop here with mm-hmm. just the with just the embedded webcam but it was the quality the quality wasn't good yeah. so i just so I just decided I'll get a sixty dollar Logitech uh, webcam from from uh, from Walmart and, and order a, order a ring light ring light off Amazon and I mean it's it's doing the good. good and yeah I mean and if I I mean like you said if I get monetized I get monetized awesome sweet cool that's not my main goal my main goal is to have fun and exactly I mean talking with you and the and the and the rest of the guys on our group yeah. it's just I'm just having fun, man. And this is and this yeah. is just the start. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. That's how my mindset was too. When I first started the channel, I didn't care if I got monetized or not. I'm like, I'm just doing this for fun. I got to meet so many cool people in the almost two years I've been doing this now. But yeah, when I first started, I was like, I don't care if I get monetized or not. I'm gonna re- I started my channel to cover Star Wars Celebration. So I wanted to show people how that was, mm-hmm. how it works, how much fun it was. And that's something that I do regardless. And then I started yeah. recording like my podcasts and like toy hunts and unboxings, which is stuff I did anyway. So that was how it started. And it just eventually progressed and it kept, you know, getting bigger building, and bigger building, and more. Building, cons- building, yeah. Building. Yeah. So to this day, I still ha- having the same amount of fun. And like, if it ever gets to the point where I'm not having fun, I'm not going to do it. Cause like, I don't need yeah. a second job that I don't enjoy. Like, why would you do that yeah. you know and so. something and one of and a uh, a principle that i follow is called 30 60 90 mm-hmm. those are it's essentially 30 60 90 days yeah and it's the concept of delayed gratification that whatever that you do whatever you do whether it's whether it's work whether it's a hobby whether it's mm-hmm. financial whatever it is it's going to take time. Yeah. Regardless of what you do, it's going to take time. Rome wasn't yep. built in a day. So yep. that's what I think a lot of creators need to need to realize that you're not going to, and you're, you're not going to get successful overnight. I mean, you can definitely boost your stuff on Instagram. You can definitely pay yeah. Instagram uh, like, yeah. ten, like five, 10 bucks a day or whatever it is. Yeah, to, uh, to get them to bo- to 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 boost your stuff up, but with that, that inflates your numbers, and that doesn't that inflates your numbers and makes you look better on paper, but you get attention that you're not ready for. Yeah. So, but anyways, I was about to start ranting. Not gonna not gonna let that happen. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry right. about that, man. <laughs> no, no, you're good. So. The next thing I was gonna ask, are you are you going to ICC Con this year? That show in uh Nashville in 
October? Hmm. It's funny that you mentioned that. I, uh, a, uh, a mortis shaped birdie might have, uh, might have whispered something in my ear about that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm probably, yeah. I think, nice. uh, I think, uh, I, I hope that media pass that I put in comes through. Oh, oh you apply for, oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah. Um, I know they haven't like pulled for those yet. But um, yeah, like w- when they pull for those media passes, they they don't really go by like, oh, how big your channel is or anything like that. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about ICCCon because they're so real there. They look at your page and they, they look at the quality of your content. And if you're a true fan, because w- when I went last year, when I first applied, I had maybe like 150 or 200 subs. Like I, I, I was like a few months in and I was like, I probably won't get approved, but I'm going to apply. Dude, I'm, I gotta, sitting at, I'm, I'm sitting at 15 right now. I've got 15 subscribers on my YouTube yeah. channel right now. <laughs> no, so. but, that's, but, that, but the good thing is that that doesn't matter. They're going to look yeah. at the quality of your content. And if you're a true fan and, like, you held yourself to, like, you know, that, that standard, they'll approve it. So, like, that's a comforting thing to know that, yeah. oh, they don't want just – of the million subscribers 100k like they they go for everybody which is great not a lot of shows do that because there's some shows that i've applied yeah. to and nothing and i'm like i'm not even going to try anymore because i'm not like the big big guys i do have a question i'm going to ask you about that off air okay um but um yeah it's um i'm planning what i'm planning on doing is i'm four hours away something like that so mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to get the the I'm gonna try to get the early shift on on work that day so I can drive up and yeah uh, my wife's never been to a con like a period so mm. me and her I'm me and her are probably gonna uh, make the drive uh, make the drive up and nice. she's, gonna, she's gonna meet the whole crew if if, if yeah. everyone shows up yeah and uh, the only thing is last time the last time I was in Nashville um the next day. Next day, a pandemic broke out. So, oh, oh, oh knock on wood right now, man. Knock yeah, on wood. Don't, yeah, don't I'm jinx doing it. it. I'm doing it. <laughs> but, um, funny, I'm gonna tell this story real quick. So, yeah. what it was is, um, my wife, it was me and my wife and my best friend. We went uh-huh. up to a went up to a post Malone concert, mm-hmm. and this was also the like the the day after some really bad tornadoes hit hit that hit that same area that wow. we were gonna be in. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. We actually we we actually drove through it, and uh, it it was we literally went up there, had the concert. We the next day, uh, the my friend left and the next day my wife and I were sit we were sit we're sitting at a Nashville uh, barbecue place. I'm I am eating a I've I have i have got a I've got a vivid memory of this meal. I was eating a uh I was eat I was eating a pork sandwich pork sandwich, having a beer, watching spring training baseball nice um, on on the TV. And then on, on another TV it says first case of COVID hits the US. And then like the next day everything shut like the next day wow. we come we come back everything's everything shuts down that's that was crazy absolutely insane but yes yeah. i'm going to i'm not going to wood right now but um yeah i i am i'm gen, i'm genuinely excited to uh, to 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 go to that con for a multitude of reasons a i've never been to icc and B, the chance to meet all you guys. That's 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 that might be the number one reason I'm excited for for this is to just be able to hang out with you guys for a day. So yeah, that's one of the things I love about these conventions, going to celebration, ICC, MegaCon. The biggest thing is just getting to hang out with your friends, meeting new friends, meeting the people that you talk to online all the time. So that's gonna be sick and amazing. And then on top of that. I went last year. It was my first ICC con, and it felt like Star Wars Celebration, but just on a more chill, calm, affordable scale, which is amazing. It blew my mind. I can't L- wait. Literally 10 minutes in, I was like, I'm never missing this show again. I'm going to be here every year. <laughs> I-, I knew within 10 minutes. Like, that's the first thing I said to my two boys I was with. I'm like, yo, I'm coming back to this every year. Like, right away, I knew we're, it, the vibe. We're doing it. Yep, well, I mean, because every- in Nashville's right up the road from me like th- like four hours up the road 
It's Not- literally just a straight shot north. So, I mean, yeah. If it's yes. if it's as good as you say it is, I'm I'm oh. I'm, I'm, I'm booking my trip every single year. <laughs> oh, it it is like it's something I'm definitely gonna plan for and budget every single year, and especially because it's a good meeting point for everybody to go to because everyone lives in different states and stuff. So like it's a really good location for everyone just to meet up and I like. Think, I think I, I I think I've done them. I was talking to um I was talking to Connor the other day, and he actually, um. He said four hours from him as well. So I think yeah. we're all like within like four at like four. I'm, I know you're in Orlando. I'm, so. I'm in Florida. Yeah. I'm like a so two it, hour flight. Yeah. That's yeah. That's crazy. But um, yeah. But yeah, I just I'm excited. to. I'm 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 excited to go. So it's going to. Yes. It's going to be a fun time in October, dude. Can't yeah. Wait. <laughs> no, it is. It is. So the next thing I want to get into we talked about it a little bit earlier, but bro, Bad Batch season three, episode ten and eleven that dropped yesterday. What did you think of those two episodes? Because like I, bro, they were so good, dude. It ripped my heart out. It ripped that, my heart that out. First one and mm. shred and shredded it. Um, I just, I, I don't know what to say. It, I, I just, they, they. They keep hitting. I mean, the fr- the first episode was a teaser for the second episode. I mean, it was. I I think what's gonna happen. I think Emery is. I mean, that's what she's the reason it was named Identity Crisis because yeah, you can yeah, tell yeah. throughout the episode like she's like she's she doesn't know she doesn't know what to do. Yep. And um, I think whenever I think she's gonna be either the reason they get the Tantus or once they get there, she's gonna be she's gonna be key to getting all the clones out and getting everything uh getting everything started. So I think yep. that's what's gonna happen. Hundred percent. It yeah, like like you said it, you called it right away. You could tell she was so broken by when she went into this vault and it was three little kids. Like what? And then so, towards the yeah yeah sorry sorry go ahead towards the end when they went to get the next kid and it was a a, a infant it was a baby. She, it was a baby yeah you could tell it was affecting her and then she gave Omega's doll to that one kid oh mm-hmm. she's gonna let them all loose she's a hundred percent gonna be the reason anybody escapes so here's my question because when I was writing everything last night when I was watching it mm-hmm. I kept calling them younglings because. Are these just kids that? Here's my question: mm-hmm. Are these kids that they just found, or yeah. all, or or all or all the? Eh, are these kids all former younglings? Because they're around, they're around that age. Oh well, I, so, I would assume they're just bounties that like Cad Bane caught. Because you know yeah, how there's yeah. there's bounties for M count people with high M count. So what class one bounties was what he yeah, said to yeah. that one message. So I would kind of assume that Cad Bane just stole all those kids and maybe they've been there for longer than that. And maybe they were younger and kind of grew into it. Yeah, if, that's, they were, that's... if they were younglings, they would have some sort of training and would be able to kind of fight a little bit or maybe push back a little bit. So I think these are just random street kids that Cad Bane stole have, like he did in that, Clone Wars. That have for, yeah, that have force potential. Yep. Yep. Um yeah, I just that's the next point I wanted to get get, get at. Just seeing Cat Bane come back. That was yeah, that was that was pretty cool. I was part of me was thinking we were gonna like part of me was thinking we were gonna see Boba we were gonna see Boba for like I feel like a half second. Me too. But ah uh, we're 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 running out of uh runway here to see Boba. Yeah. We have, we've only we've only got four episodes left and I think we've all seen all the the only footage we haven't seen in from the from the trailers was uh, the That's, heist. The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the tank, the tank yeah. on the side where Wrecker's jumping out, and that same tank going over like a bridge or something like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's the only thing. Um, that's got to be like that's got to be like next episode. I think it's the next one. Yeah, my uh, during my reaction. When you heard the spurs on the boots, I was like, oh, it's Cabane. I'm like, 
what if it's Boba Fett? Because Boba Fett had Spurs too. So that split second, I was like, what if the door opened up and we all expected Cad Bane and you see young Boba Fett there? That would have been dope. I've got a... I'm a little conflicted about the whole Boba, Boba Fett thing. Not that we see him. Uh-huh. But whose side he's going to be on? I think the Empire, man. I think yeah, he's going to be on the Empire side. <laughs> Part of me wants to think he has a little bit of a heart, has a little bit of a soul when he's that young and says these guy like he I don't know how he well. Yeah, I don't know how he views the clones. I can't I, I know there's one one early episode in Clone Wars where he like in person, like he's acting like yeah, a younger clone yeah, 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 trying, yeah, to, yeah. trying to kill Mace Windu. Yeah, that was but, so good. Oh, but I don't know at this stage of his life where his alliances would i mean he's probably just gonna be he's, it's, he's probably gonna just be a bounty hunter but i don't think we're gonna see him because we because we're running out of room and yeah. the only the only i think the only episode that would make sense is next week's episode because yeah after next week's episode we're 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 in the final three episodes they're gonna they're they're gonna go so yeah. i i don't know i we might see Boba, we might not see Boba. I'm I'm leaning more towards we're not gonna see him. Yeah, so, I know. Like you said, we're running out of runway. So at this point in the timeline, <clears throat> excuse me, he's a he's a little pain in the ass and he's a little thug because uh, we just read Dark Disciple and in Dark Disciple he was in there. Asajj went to Boba Fett twice and Boba Fett is at a bar drinking, hanging out with bounty hunters. So he's a little like he's a little uh uh. uh yeah, he is. He is. So <laughs> if, if if anything, he's going to be more on the, the bad guy side, the Empire side, because like after this, next time we see him, he's an Empire and he's like Vader's right hand bounty hunter. So if we do see him, I, I, yeah, I, I feel like we're slowly it's it's slowly getting away because yeah, like, yeah. I thought it would make sense if we would see him trying to pick up Omega and get the bounty on her. But she's caught again. So it's like, why would he show up now? You know? Yeah. So the only thing that the only thing I, I need answered is who is this shadow clone? Who is this guy? Oh, I freak. So at one point in the episode when he was calling in after he confirmed it was Omega, he sounded like Crosshair a hundred percent. So it maybe there's it was a Crosshair part, clone. There's a there's a there's another part where he also sounds like uh, um, Hunter. Also, a little bit, was, yeah. Little, so maybe so I don't, I don't know what they're doing with the voice modulation there, or they're messing with us, bro. So uh, I don't. Unless he's I, like a, a hybrid super scroll, and it's a clone, and they inject all the capabilities of the Bad Batch, and it's like he has, he has the abilities of got, all of got, them. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I've seen that theory. Um, yeah. I, I don't know, man. I don't part. Part of me thinks that it. Mm, it's so tough, man. Every episode. Part of like, me. Part of me. Th- part of me thinks it's. I I, I started I, I started the season with this theory. About halfway through, I said it's not. Now I'm back at it. I I, I want to say I, I want to say it's tech. At this point, my but, brain is my brain's pointing that direction. So well, but tech knows where Pabu is. So why would he need to steal the directions well, on where because, Pabu is? Because. Remember, I think it's is it confirmed that they they have their memories wiped when they become these shadow clones, right? Oh, uh, I I guess if if that happens, then that would make sense. But man, just leave Tech dead. You're gonna bring yeah, him back yeah. to break our hearts on this ending. That's the ending anyway. To what? Kill him again, or to end the season with us knowing Tech's alive, but he's a bad guy? That would be so, so I, it's, messed it's, up. I think. I've said I've, this is my theory. It's it's either tech or it's tech, it's Cody or it's some super mega yeah, yeah. clone with like you said. Yeah. So I think for um, I mean I think that there, there's going to be an emotional payoff for, for whoever this guy is. It's going to be yeah. an emotional payoff. I think it's Cody. I think I'm 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 thinking it's Cody because. He went a wall, and we haven't seen him. Yeah, so, yeah, I think it's Cody, and I think, 
it's I think it's it's going to be a combination of two things. It's going a it's going to be Cody, and it's going to be Cody like souped up with oh, everything. Oh, with like like Steve Rogers, Super Serum, Captain America, with Cody. Y- yeah. Oh yep. man. Oh. And it's going to break everybody's hearts. I'm going to cry. So. I would cry if if they reveal that it's Cody and Rex has to kill him. Like that would be so emotional. And that's and that's why you just and that's why Rex went on hiding because he had no, to kill Re- Rex. No, Rex, Wolf, and Gregor. Gregor. That's why. That's why they just bounced because because they had to kill Cody. Oh, that shit would make me cry so much more than like if the rest of the Bad Bats died. I'm, I have more Tony, of a connection with those. Danny, Tony. Damn, Damn, Tony. That's yeah, because that's the emotional oh, payoff. Man. It has to be something, and like, if it's tech, that would be, uh, yeah, that'd be really sad. But if it's Cody and like his brothers that he grew up with on the seven seasons of Clone Wars have to take him out, wow. And that, and that would also explain why Cody's just not there anywhere. The yeah, period. yeah. So, I hope that's uh, not true, man. Uh, <sighs> We'll see. Damn. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but so yeah, Bad Batch, amazing. I'm loving the season. I cannot wait for next week. So four episodes left. It should be fun. But we've been uh pretty satisfied with that. But today, so I was at freaking work and like I, and I went to lunch at 12. And when I got back at one, that's when this trailer posted. And I was like, are you kidding me? So I had to stay off my phone for three hours, which was nearly impossible to react to the Tales of the Empire trailer. What did you think of it? I was OK. Funny enough, I was also right here in the same spot working. And I had a few minutes. Things got slow. And so I just I get I jump on my. I jump on my page, start scrolling through, just seeing stuff. Uh, Star Star Wars is putting out a merch line for uh, May the Fourth. Their usual yep. stuff, yeah. And yeah. then just and then just out of nowhere, I see that poster, and then I go straight to YouTube and I see it, and I, I, when I first watched it, I didn't see um, Maroc or the. Is the, it the, six, the, the six, six brother, six brother, six brother. From, Thank from you. Tales. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see them. I didn't see them. All I heard was the, all I heard was Vader. I was like, yeah. What? what? So I, so I watched, like, I literally watched that, and then made my reaction reel that mm-hmm. I posted. I mean, it's like it was. I saw that, and then made the reaction reel, and I just, I'm excited. For um, for the two, for the two, for the two people that we're getting, makes yeah. a lot of sense. Cause it does. We get, and funny, I find it, I find it funny and a little ironic. Who's the one character character that connects these two? Ahsoka. Bingo. Yeah, isn't that it? Isn't that weird? Isn't, it's isn't that, it's isn't, crazy. Isn't that a little weird? It could it it th- this show ties in Clone Wars, Rebels, Mando, and Ahsoka, and I, I'm wondering is this potentially setting up for Barris to come live action in Ahsoka season two? And for if Barris is alive, can we see her as an Inquisitor trying to hunt down Ahsoka? See, here's the I'm gonna I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a fly in that in that ointment, my friend. I don't think she makes it out of makes it out of tells t- tells of the empire. I don't, I don't think she does. I think Vader, uh, bro. I think Vader. I think okay. I'm about to make a very very bad joke here. I think Barris Offy is about to get offed. So <laughs> all right, I'm done. I'm gone. Bye. So, <laughs> but um, I think I don't think he. I don't think she makes it out of that chamber alive because it's possible. Because I think he might because. At this time, this is what I like to say. That isn't Vader that is in that suit. That is still Anakin. And that's, that's going to trigger him. The minute he sees her, it's going to flashback. You frame my Padawan and she left the order. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. You're the reason I'm in this robotic coffin. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. So It's um, possible. 
I, I mean that that, that 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 makes sense to me because you've got because you've got to think during Obi Wan, which is just a few years after I'm a, just a few years after this like mm-hmm. that 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 timeline. She's I mean he he's he's on the hunt for Kenobi and literally to the point to where he ignores everything else and just goes after him. Yeah. And the, and the emperor has to pull him back and say, Hey, look, man, I get it, but you can't do this. You got, you got to drop Kenobi. You got to drop him. So I think Barris gets killed by Darth Vader in that chamber. And if she doesn't, then she's a hundred percent coming live action. 100%. 100%. If she survives. If she survives. Because I thought in the Ahsoka show, I thought she was going to pop up. I thought she was freaking Maroc. I thought... No, that's... Mo- every, that everybody thought that, dude. I thought that. Like... Bro, and speaking of Maroc, that son of a bitch was there. Like, are we going to see who Maroc is finally? Like, please. Maroc and the Sixth Brother, both the Smoke Brothers that blew up in smoke in both of their shows. Like, are we going to get to see the origins of Maroc? Like I, I doubt it though, because inqui- those type of inquisitors never t- really take their masks off. Yeah, so but well, I mean, well, he's well. The thing is, he's but spoiler 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 alert: he has the die first because he's a reanimated corpse. Yeah, I mean, what if what if he dies and then you see Morgan Elsbeth bring him his body back to life with magic, and she's like, "You're coming with me," and it ends like that. Do you see? Oh, mm, something I just thought about. Do you think we see Marin? So, uh, it's possible, uh, was it, uh, Cole from Mortis FM, uh, or, or who was it? Someone, in, 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 someone was saying that it's possible maybe we see, like, a young Marion, and maybe Morgan is, like, hiding her from Grievous and all that massacre that's happening. So, it's possible we could see a young Marion. I would love if they tied it in, but I feel like they don't really like to tie in the video game characters like that, man. They they like to tie Which, in some of the places and stuff, but the actual characters and, and lore, I don't know, man. They're missing an opportunity because I don't think Disney realizes the gold mine that they have in front of them with the with the Fallen Order games. I don't think they realize Bro, that. We love Marin. Bro, even Trilla. What if we get to see a young Trilla in the background there when they're training? That would just be beautiful. Yeah, I would oh. I would love that. I would I I would I would love that. But I think and I've said this, I don't and it kills me because I love Cameron. I I love Cameron. I, he's one of my favorite like yeah. like take Star Wars out of the equation. He's one of my favorite actors. Yeah. Right now. Like I I love him. If you haven't watched Gotham and him as young oh, Joker, you need to So good. That joke. You need to oh. watch, I loved him as Joker, man. Oh, and um, what's the other show that he's on? Um, oh, Shameless. I've never seen yeah, it, but Shameless. I think it's Shameless. Yeah. Um. Yep. Yeah, uh, my wife's watched it like two times, to- like two or three times over at this point, and he's yeah. and he. I mean, he's that's also another show he's in. So, I don't think we're gonna see Cal until after his story, that character story, is complete. In the game, like, I, after, that, like yeah. after the third game, I think that's yep. af- that's yep. when we see him in live action. If we do, because Cameron adores that character, like he loves that character. Yeah. So I think, so I think, bringing him in as a, as an older as a older Cal would make a lot of sense. But we'll, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. So. I know I would love some sort of like reason for this to happen, but I would love for Cal and Marion to run into Asajj and Quinlan because it's kind of like the same thing. Jedi with the Night Sister breaking all the rules like it'd be so cool if for some reason they their paths cross. They're like, oh, you're a Jedi. I'm a Jedi. Oh, your girl's a Night Sister. So is my girl. Like it's just it's just very similar story. So that'd be kind of cool and funky. But yeah, I think you're you're right. I don't think we're going to see Cal. It made sense for us to see him in the Kenobi show. The freaking, the Fortress Inquisitorius is from the freaking video game. Kenobi did the same thing Cal did to break did. in. Like, and then Kenobi did the Starkiller move, killing the Stormtrooper in the darkness, like with his lightsaber. See, light, the, thing that, up. the thing that bugs me about the Kenobi show, the thing that, the, the one, the one thing that bugs me is the first episode is... 
Obi Wan would not leave Luke. Un- oh. Like it, it bugs me. He yeah, wouldn't yeah, yeah. leave Luke protected. He just like he's gonna leave him with just Owen and Baru h- hanging out. You have That's- I know you I know you have some contacts. Where's Where's Ahsoka? Where's Cody? Where's yeah? Like, I, I, like those two at least made the most sense. Especially Cody. I mean, like maybe he's paying, paying, paying back for what for for what he did. But anyways, I digress. I, I was gonna say Cody, and you heard about what the the you know how like the Kenobi show was originally supposed to be a movie, and Cody was supposed to be in it. Did you hear mm-hmm. like why Cody was gonna be in it? He was, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I remember watching a YouTube video on it, like, like yeah, like, like like a year ago. He was essentially like, like paying, like I said, like pay, essentially paying for his sins, like, yeah, like just protecting Kenobi and keeping him sharp because, yep, yep, of yeah, of, of what he did to, of what he did to Obi Wan, essentially. Yeah, I, I heard one of the scenes was it was gonna be like Kenobi walking through Tatooine. And Cody was g- going to grab him and pull him down an alley. So that way we'd all that think, oh, my like God. First, that was supposed to be the first scene, wasn't it? Yeah. And then he was going to be like, see how easy it was to catch you? You have to be more discreet, more undercover. So yeah. that would have been dope if Cody would have been there because he would have been like, Cody, I need you to watch Luke. I got to go. Like, that would make sense. But they just uh, – they, they didn't take that part of the script, bag, man. Bag fumble. Bag fumble. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. But when I saw this trailer, man – I did not expect it at all. The bear stuff was cool. And like, I kind of like, you know, when, when you're spitting out, who do you think is going to be in the tails? I, I, I've said Barris before. I was hoping like Asajj or Shin, Balin, but I would always love Barris. So Barris is great. Morgan Elsbeth, bro, curveball, but it makes sense because now we see why she knows Thrawn. Because in the Ahsoka show, it made no sense she, that she, she knew she Thrawn. There. Yeah, she was yeah there. like I could sense Thrawn from far away. Like how? So that made sense, and seeing her on Dathomir and the the massacre that Grievous did there, that is going to be nuts. Seeing her fight Grievous, I didn't think we would get more Grievous, so that's beautiful in itself. Mm-hmm. But um, seeing the stuff with uh, the even the Mando episode, how she took over that village, that one dude was still there. That was in the episode that like Asian dude that was really quiet. It didn't want to talk to Dane when he first came in. He was there in uh, animated. Did you notice that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was dope. But um, seeing is it me or or does the the Clone Wars version of Thrawn look kind of like Lars more like Lars a Mikkelsen bit. more? A yeah, yeah. It looked a little funky, but uh, I I just I'm so excited for this. It's just very dark. And I was watching Theory's oh. reaction to it. He mentioned how it's dark and bloody. Like, Barris was bleeding. They never really showed blood like that in Clone Wars, did they? Mm-mm. Like, and actual blood. That actually reminds me of a tone shift that I've noticed. Yeah. So, Disney Plus is going from... Is making a tone shift in the in the shows. We're literally going from the good guy's perspective, from the Jedi to the clones to the Republic, oh. to to the Empire, to the Acolyte. And I yep. don't think, I think Disney's doing that on purpose. Yeah. I think that... they're doing that on purpose. So these next couple of months, we're going to be eating very well. Very well, and, very dark. Um, I've got a... Still got a little teaser I got to tell you about. So, um, but I'll continue. I'll save that. Save that to the very, very end. So yeah, 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 for sure, continue, for sure. Continue. So I am beyond hype for this, and like, bro, it's a month away. We get this in thirty days. Uh, it's Literally, confer- it's confirmed on the captions of the video. It's six episodes, six just episodes, like tales. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so we get six. So I'm guessing it's gonna be like three a.m., bro. My ass is gonna be up at three a.m. And like I'm gonna be, it. I'm gonna have so much adrenaline, cause like, bro, it just it looks so good. I'm watching all six in a row, bro. I don't even care. I cannot. I'm wait gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm probably. I think I know what I'm gonna do, but I'm mm-hmm. not getting. I'm not getting up at three a.m. I'm just not doing it. Well, I'm. I'm <laughs> off those at, three days. I'm prepared, bro. I'm ready, yeah, dude. I. 
I get up at 5 a.m. to work out every morning. I'm not getting up at 3. Not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so the next thing I was going to get into was just May the 4th weekend, and that just makes it more insane. So May 2nd, we get Star Wars Celebration tickets. May 3rd, Phantom Menace back in theaters. Go May 4th, it. Tales of the Jedi. That weekend is going to be one of the strongest May the 4th weekends in years because there's a lot of like – like, wow, people are going to get their tickets for Celebration. Some people are going to see Phantom Menace for the first time or see it again, which I'm so hyped for that. And then Saturday, we're going to get Tails. Oh, man. Like, what what a time, man. That weekend's wild. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, wait. The fourth is the fourth is a Saturday. I totally forgot about Then I will yeah. be watching all six episodes That's in a row. Saying. Never mind. Yeah. I'll be off. <laughs> I requested that Friday, Saturday, Sunday off just in case something popped up. And I'm so glad that I did. So yeah, yeah bro. That's so Saturday's gonna be fun. Cause Saturday. What, yep. Because what's gonna happen is my uh, my my wife and I are going to go see Phantom Menace in the, yeah in the theaters. And um, and something you forgot to mention. What's in front of the Phantom Menace showing? Oh, the uh, a first yep. view uh-huh. at, at Act of Light. Yes, sir. I forgot about yes, that. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I know what I'm doing that day. You just, you just, you just gave me, you just gave me an idea. Yeah, yeah. A- Acolyte, Phantom Menace. Te- yeah, bro. The Empire, just what, all day. What a, what a time! <laughs> what a it. freaking time! I That's love so it. I love awesome. it. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's I, gonna I, be good, dude. I'm glad, and I'm, I'm also very glad because there's a lot of people going to Galaxy's Edge on May the fourth. So I'm glad I didn't plan like a Disney Park day because I think maybe a few years ago I did it. And it's fun to go on May the 4th, right? But I'm so glad I didn't do it this year. And a bunch of my friends and people that I know are going. Nah, bro, I'm going to be home. I'm watching Tales. I've got stuff to do. I got I got that. And then uh, Hasbro is going to reveal the Vintage Collection HasLab. So like, who knows what that's going to be? So I'm going to watch that live. Yeah, man, it's going to be a busy day. I'll probably do some live streams, play uh, Survivor again. Like, I'm just going to be so in the mood, so in the zone on that day. I I cannot wait, man. It's going to be a great it's gonna, weekend. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. Yeah. It's going to so, be so much fun. Yeah. So that was the last thing that I have. What's your uh, – what, what do you got? You got something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So – um. You guys haven't been following me, like I like I started like I started off with. Um, I well the first um, the first thing that I put out on my Spotify channel was a what if series that I've had written for like three years. Like I wrote that like in like 2021, and mm-hmm. it's what if Anakin? What if Obi Wan took Anakin to Utapau? And that's what that's that's my baby i i've i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna spoil anything in in the story just please go if you haven't please go listen to it heck tony i will give you the link to the first part if you need it and go listen to it because i think it's really good um yeah. i turn i turn essentially i essentially turn what we know on its head and um on monday I announced I'm going to remaster and re-release these on my YouTube channel. Nice. And um, I've got a whole I've I've got a whole cast of um, people of our friends that are going to provide the voices. Nice. So on parts one through four, I'm going to be making it into an audio drama on uh-huh. my YouTube channel, um, and that's coming soon. I don't have a release. I don't have a release date yet. Yeah, but um, it's it's gonna come. I can get. I can promise you, it's gonna come before. It's gonna come before Acolyte. It's nice. Gonna, part, okay. part 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 one is gonna part release one. before before Acolyte, and uh, then I'll get part two, part three, part four out. Um, yeah. Once I once I refine those scripts, but right now, um, the cast is uh, the cast is. Is, is set um i'll even give you i'll even give you the post here in a minute and um the cast is set and now this over the next three weeks the the, the, the last couple of weeks of bad batch mm-hmm. all i'm gonna be doing outside of bad batch is just 
refining the refining the script, nice. writing it, making sure it's crisp, making sure everything makes sense. Yeah. And I am I am so excited to be working with the talented individuals that are in this cast. And I just it's it's going to be something special, Tony, and I can't wait I can't wait I can't wait for people people to see it. I really can't nice that's awesome so for you guys watching be sure to to check the link down in the description for both his youtube and spotify i'm gonna have the links down there go listen to that and that's awesome man i cannot wait for that and for that to come out man it's gonna be it's gonna be real it's, fun it, it's gonna oof, i can't wait it's gonna be it's it, it, it i'm gonna make i'm gonna make this perfect as perfect as i can make it so it's it's gonna be it's gonna, yes. it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be really good awesome that is awesome man well again man thank you for coming on man this was a blast i appreciate you no dude thank you for having me on man i mean this is i mean it's always a fun time talking story talking stories with you you're, yes. you're one of the chillest guys i know so it's just a uh, pleasure is all mine man thank you yes and that's gonna be it for this episode of sift talk guys we'll see you guys next week bye guys See y'all later.